It's Umsum time! What if snakes became our friends? No big deal. Umsum and snakes are already best friends. Oh, Umsum. If snakes became our best friends, people with ophidiophobia, as in fear of snakes, will start <laughs> staying away from us. Hmm. Mice will never come near us again. Hmm. Like snakes, uh -huh. even we might start shedding our skin. Hmm. We may even start hissing <laughs> like snakes. Huh? We may even start crawling <laughs> like snakes. Hmm. Just like snakes, we may even start living in underground holes. Mm. Other wild animals may stand in line to become our best friends. Hmm. Thieves will never steal from us. Huh? Hmm. Villains will start running away from us. Hmm. Aliens will never come near us again. Hmm. To buy Umsum merchandise, visit umsum.com. Snake versus mongoose. Who wins? I, me, and myself. All right. A snake, especially a cobra, is a tasty meal for the mongoose. So it fights to kill while the cobra fights to defend itself. When the cobra strikes, the mongoose's lightning speed helps it dodge the strikes, causing the cobra to miss repeatedly. But what if the cobra succeeds in striking? Toxins in the snake's venom attach to the acetylcholine receptors, blocking communication between nerves and muscles, ultimately causing death. However, in mongoose, these receptors are mutated or shaped differently. The toxin cannot attach to the receptors, making venom ineffective. Eventually, when the cobra gets exhausted, the mongoose snaps with its sharp teeth, killing the cobra and winning the battle. Mostly, between the cobra and mongoose, mongoose wins. However, if the snake is a viper or boa constrictor, then the mongoose can be killed. Why do snakes shed their skin? Wait, I'll explain. When a snake grows, its outer skin layer called epidermis does not grow or get bigger with it. Hence, the snake sheds its epidermis periodically to allow further growth of its body. In addition to this, shedding also helps remove parasites present on the epidermis. So does the snake buy a new skin? No. First, listen. Before shedding, the snake grows a new epidermis beneath the old one and secretes a fluid between the old and new epidermis. This fluid helps separate the old epidermis from the new one. Once this is done, the process of shedding begins. To remove the old epidermis, the snake rubs its head against any hard surface, creating a tear either near mouth or near nose area. Then, it drags and wriggles its body against any hard surface and slowly slithers out of the old epidermis. Hmm. Why do snakes have forked tongue? Just for fashion! No. Even though snakes have noses, they smell odors of their prey, ah. mate, or surroundings with the help of their tongue and vomeronasal organ. Each time a snake flicks its tongue in air, it collects odor particles. Then, when the tongue is brought back, the particles are transferred to the vomeronasal organ. This organ detects the odors and sends signals to the brain, helping the snake smell. Wow, that's interesting! Now, we know that when we see with our two separate eyes, our brain combines the two different perspectives and makes a detailed image of our surrounding. Similarly, because the tongue of a snake is forked, it collects odor particles from two different locations helping the snake understand in which direction oh. the odor is coming from and thus making it easier to locate the prey. Hmm. Huh? What if all snakes disappeared? Then I will become a snake and scare everybody. Oh, I'm some. 
firstly, snakes primarily snack on mice or rats. With all snakes gone, oh. mice or rats will have a gala time. Musophobia, as in fear of mice or rats, might set in. Mm. Secondly, venom from snakes plays a very important role in the development of medicines. They've been used in the treatment of heart attacks as well as blood disorders. With no more snakes, medical research might suffer a lot. Thirdly, animals like mongoose, eagles, and hawks will really miss snakes. This is because they are known to kill and eat them. Fourthly, many iconic Hollywood films like Anaconda, Harry Potter series, etc. have snakes playing important roles. With no snakes, Hollywood scriptwriters might face tough times. Lastly, people with ophidiophobia, as in fear of snakes, will have nothing to worry about anymore. <laughs> Why do zebras have stripes? Simple. Because I painted them. <laughs> oh, I'm some. According to a recent study, zebras may have evolved stripes to huh? evade flies. Hmm. An experiment was carried out in Somerset, United Kingdom, using brown oh. or black horses, zebras, <laughs> and flies. Hmm. It was found out that zebras and horses both receive similar number of approaches from flies. Hmm. But far fewer flies actually landed on the zebras. After frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the videos, it was seen that the flies slowly decelerated as they approached the horses before making a controlled landing. In case of zebras, the flies failed to decelerate. They either flew past the zebras or directly bumped and bounced off them. Now, when striped coats were put on horses, the flies landed on the horse's naked head but flew past or bounced off their striped body coats. Thus, zebras may have evolved stripes in order to avoid flies. Hmm. Why do kangaroos hop? Simple. I taught them how to hop. Oh, um some. <laughs> it is believed that about 30 million years ago, ancestor of the kangaroo, who normally stayed in treetops, climbed down and tried moving on the ground. Hmm. Now, as this animal was used to climbing trees, its feet were very long. Hmm. As a result, it was not able to walk or run properly. But it soon discovered that hopping was much easier for it. This is why it is believed that kangaroos started hopping. Hmm. Kangaroos have large, stretchy tendons in their hind legs. These act like giant springs. They contract and generate most of the energy needed for the hop. Hmm. Also, in the hopping motion of the kangaroos, their lungs inflate and deflate. Thus, kangaroos don't need to put in any extra effort to breathe while hopping. Hmm. What if dinosaurs came back? Cool. I am sure even they will become my fans. Oh, um some. Firstly, if dinosaurs came back, humans, along with their pet animals, may have to shift to a different planet. Hmm. Secondly, if dinosaurs came back, Lion, the king of the jungle, might have to give up his crown. Hmm. Thirdly, if dinosaurs came back, giraffe, the tallest animal on Earth, will not look that tall anymore. Hmm. Fourthly, if dinosaurs uh -huh. came back, eagle, the king of the sky, might have to find a place to hide. Hmm. Fifthly, if dinosaurs huh? came back, dinosaurs will eat up everything. There will be severe scarcity of food. Hmm. Lastly, if dinosaurs came back, Paleontologists, as in scientists who specialize in studying fossils, will be overjoyed. Hmm. What if lions start flying? I know, I know! I taught them! Huh? Oh, I'm some. Firstly, if lions start flying, Eagle, the king of the sky, will not be happy with this situation. Mm. Secondly, if lions start flying, other animals might get inspired even they might try their hand at flying. Hmm. Thirdly, if lions start flying, lions will now be able to spot deers easily. Deers may not have any space left to hide. Hmm. Fourthly, if lions start flying, it will get very difficult to keep them inside zoos. Zoos will lose their major attraction. Hmm. 
Fifthly, if lions start flying, lions will now easily reach our terraces. People might think twice before entering their terrace. Mm. Lastly, if lions start flying, lions may start building nests on trees. Other birds may have to move out. <laughs>